So the battery is right on the limit of what it considers minimum power to charge it or use it. And you can see that this is jumping up and down because it's dumping voltage into the battery, but then deciding it's not enough, so it keeps turning it off and on. So you see the input voltage fluctuating also. I think the two should be independent, but they're not. Actually, when they pull the power off of this, it lowers the voltage. So they're pulling more amps, so that lowers the voltage. And that should stabilize. The panel itself is putting out 20 volts. It's not in direct sunlight, but it's actually doing okay. So you see, it still says it's not quite enough. And this is what happens when the panel gets power the next morning after these have ran all night long. So I'm actually going to, it seems a little, maybe a little dark in here, but I'm actually going to film all the segments on this using the LED lights. I just have them hanging from above. So I have all the other lights off. As you can see, to get the panels outside, I've got to put this at its extreme reach. So I've actually got a little bit of strain on this plug, and I don't like that. But there's an easy way to extend those. They make these connectors. Um, this says Workman Electric Prod Model TP10-1 Polarized Quick Disconnect 1 inch long 2 pin 10 gauge. The 10 gauge is going to handle anything that this little system can put out. This is 100 watts. If you get to putting several of these together, you might approach the limit of 10 gauge. But looking at this, that is probably uh, an 18 gauge, maybe even a 20 gauge wire. So 10 gauge is way overkill. Now, I get these at Hamfest, and this one costs $3. The 12 gauge is $2, and the 14 gauge is $1. I think that's the right price. So they're relatively inexpensive, and they come as one piece, but you cut them in two and put cables between them. So what I've done, that's getting old. Uh, I've got another one here. Let's hook it up and see what it says. Twelve one, and this says twelve four. So let's pull that down. If I take that off, the panel's actually putting out twenty volts. Anyway, so you take these, you cut them in two, you put cable between them. You should, of course, keep the cable consistent gauge all the way through. I got these for my ham radio gear. This is how I provide power to my mobile antenna that has a motor in it. I created this, which is actually kind of long. Uh, if you're going mobile, you need to have a cable that's probably about the length of your vehicle so that you can plug it in to the battery and make it all the way back to the tail end of the vehicle. So this is fairly long, well over 10 feet. Um, this is a toroid core to keep RF from going from the antenna to the power in the car. Uh, a Jeep Liberty, if you don't have that in a Jeep Liberty, when you transmit, the whole dash panel lights up. They don't have enough RF filtering in that Liberty. Now in my Toyotas, I've never had that problem. I still run these as a precaution, but I've never had that problem. And the end of this is 10 gauge, the middle is 12. So there is a mismatch, but I know 12 is a limit for this cable. So, and I wrapped it with uh, black tape. And it's this is probably seven or eight years old. So I've used it quite a bit. And then the other end has the other end of the cable, of course. So I'm gonna use this to extend the reach of these panels so I can get them in the sun better. Okay, so here's the cable. It's, I wanna say 10 feet, but it might be 12, I don't know. And it looks like hell, I know. But I'm gonna need something like this to get these panels from the roof into the house to the charge controller, because I don't want the charge controller to be outside, and where I'm gonna use the power is inside. So, so what I've done is insert this in between the charge controller adapter and the combiner. So I've got several, several more feet. So let's start moving these further down. That way they'll hit the sunlight earlier in the day. So if we look at this, that's about 
the maximum distance you can get between the panels themselves because that's the length of the combiner. Okay, so using my extension, I got those all the way out in the driveway. Now, this has been out here for a couple of days and I'm gonna leave it for a couple more. I don't wanna put them on the roof until I know everything about them and don't wanna make any more adjustments. So I went through my ham radio gear and I found one of these that actually has a 20 amp fuse built into it. That's always a plus. And it's probably as long as the other one, 10 or 12 feet long. Now, these are actually easy to buy. These are for antenna gear, but they work just as well in the solar panel. They provide power. And here's a shorter one I had. And of course it has the toroid to filter RF. And this is a homemade one. It's a 30 amp cable. And I just put uh, 12 gauge house wire between it. And that one's a little shorter, maybe six feet. So you have a lot of options and these are relatively cheap. Okay, so the battery is at 13.8. That's the one that was so low this morning. About an hour and a half later, we're at 13.8. We were at 10.8. Uh, so it charges fairly quickly. It says 16.4 for the solar panels, but if we unhook that, it's actually running 22.4. This little gauge, a uh, lead acid battery monitor, and it's made to put into projects. So it says 16.3. So the next thing I need to do is wire these together so that they're in parallel. Still have a 12 volt system, but they'll provide a lot more amperage over time, more capacity. So maybe it won't go dead overnight. Now I've got a bunch of these. Um, I'll probably end up making a battery bank out of them and that'll be what this thing runs off of. So I have enough cable now to put these on the roof and run the monitors inside so I can mount this inside and then take power off of it for different things. Hey, good morning. So I've had this for a while and I've got two sets of batteries that I've been charging. This is the solar battery that they advertise and sell with this, but we use these for scooter batteries. And I first put the, when I first put these on, they were about 12.5 volts and they've charged up to 13.7 even though the manual says it won't charge a battery that's less than about 12.6 it did charge these these were about 12.2 and it did charge them even though the manual says the battery has to be 12.6 before the system will start charging it so i've got two sets of batteries and they're wired in parallel so that both are still getting 12 volts but the amperage is increased these are a lot smaller than these, so I don't charge them at the same time. So here's my monitor, and that's actually what's coming out of the solar panels. And if these are fully charged, you don't see a big difference here. Now I ran them outside, and I've had them out there for a couple of weeks, just experimenting with how much they'll charge, what they'll do. The problem I ran into is with the cables. None of the connections are waterproof. If you read the manual, and this is actually one system I would highly recommend you read the manual. The manual says to put all the wiring in a weatherproof enclosure. Well, you're talking conduit at that point, or custom wiring. And the solar panels have a custom cable coming off of them. So you have to either take the panel apart and put your own cables on, or use that cable. And that cable is actually fairly long, I'll say 10 feet. But that still won't get you, like, if you put it on a roof. I think these are f fully intended to be temporary panels. So you set them up for temporary use and take them down. I don't think they're meant to be permanently installed. So let's go over this charge controller. So this is charge mode. The panels are charging the battery and the lights are available. 13.8 is what I consider to be nominal for these batteries. They'll work less, but that is fully charged. So you can cycle through the settings. So just hit this, it's called a load button. So that 14.4 is the voltage that it will use to, they call it boost. It's actually to top off the battery. So it'll keep giving that after it's fully charged. So there's what it considers fully charged, 13.8. This is the voltage that 
the batteries are too low to be charged, 10.8. Okay, 12.6 is what power it's going to put out. And then we're back to charging. And it's charging and the battery's full. It considers the battery either fully charged or almost fully charged. The one thing that this is missing is a way to install it on the roof. Now, you can, you can use this to connect all the panels. And I'll probably connect two of them together. Although, if I'm going to leave them portable, I don't really see the need for this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, you can see, if I unplug this, the battery voltage actually dropped a little. The panels are not charging the battery, but the battery is available to the lights. The system comes with this quick start guide. Pretty basic, same thing we did setting this up. I've still got to join the panels together. But for now, I'm just using this to charge the batteries. So the charge controller protects itself against hooking these up backwards. So it just doesn't come on. I would assume that if you have a short between here and the panels that it would also protect itself. Actually a good feature to have on these. So there's going over the system, how to use the basic functionality, how to hook it up, how to charge batteries. So in the next video, we'll talk about joining them together and either using them portable or fixed in some location. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.